Brought to you by 2K Sports, the creator of this game, and footage taken from the PlayStation 4 version and Steam variations of WWE 2K19. XPWL Pro Wrestling is proud to present Novel Beach Slam Fest. Hello everyone, welcome to Sobble Beach, Ontario, Canada for our jam-packed pay-per-view. It's going to be over three and a half hours long of action featuring matches like this one here brought to us by DAW. We have ourselves a wonderful eight-woman match to start us off. We have Violance in an interpromotional match against YWL's Evangelico. Following that, the IWF's contribution to tonight's show features the Brothers in Charms featuring Ravishing Ronald taking on the Ultramarine, Dragsar, and Grax. Also on the card tonight, we have another eight-woman elimination match featuring some very lovely ladies that are here tonight to put on a show. And of course, before we get into the main show, we have our main event from the Steam Division as our Twitch champion, Richard Cannon, takes on the YouTube champion, Abu Mal Malik Aku. Following that, our opening contest features the Tag Team Championship and the Cruiserweight Championship. Following that, with Nick Butcher trying to take the title from Antoine, the Zib Zib, the Zebra. The XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship is also on the line as the Magitech Freak Hunters look to take on the Bloody Symphony. After that, we have ourselves a grudge match tonight as in a False Count Anywhere contest, Twyla Meta will take on Flint. Following that, the XPWL Super Heavyweight Championship is on the line. And of course, a highly anticipated rematch, the XPWL Women's Champion Magic Mare defends against Cynical Flitter. Due to injury, White Cybertail was unable to compete for the International Championship, so Mr. X defends tonight against Texan Gamer. And of course, our World Championship tonight, the triple threat between Stone Cold True Blue, the Inverted Shadow, and Gabriel the Destroyer. We have ourselves a star-stacked card tonight, and we can't wait to get started. I tell you, folks, I'm riled up. Let's get this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, this opening contest is a contribution by C.A.W. Currently on her way to the ring from Yamaguchi, Japan, she is known as the Dragon Lady. And I haven't been able to catch up on some of the uh, C.A.W. matches, but I do know that all of the all of the competitors in CAW, they're hard workers, very, very talented. So it'll be nice to be able to show these guys off here, or at least these women in this case, I'm sorry. Of course, CAW has their own live streams as well. You can catch them on Thursday nights. And wow, check that out. Dragon Lady bringing the fire. Gonna be a hell of an opening contest, I can already tell. We're waiting who's up next. Might be getting a case of double vision though. Oh boy, we know that theme. Her opponent, from Equestria, she represents the PWO, the Pony World Order. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the great and powerful Trixie Lula Trixie 
a part of the PWO with her stablemate Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shimmer. He's the only representative of the PWO in this match, as far as I have noticed. Of course, Trixie and her alter, her alternate variation of herself later on tonight, defending the XPWL Women's Championship. So I'm really looking forward to seeing just what Trixie can do when the magic is not exactly the same as the one we're used to. She brings just as many fireworks into shows as Magic Mare does. And her music is uh, her music is stopped, giving herself the chance to banter towards the crowd, letting them know, yes, she is that great, yes, she is that powerful. She is literally just like Magic Mare. And here we go, another set of fireworks going off. You can only imagine just how good she's going to do in this match. demeanor definitely and she's coming out here with a ball bat just know she can't use that in the ring right hard to keep an eye on everybody in this match. So if I get anybody's names wrong or if I grew up on anybody's moves, please forgive me. Again, like I said, I'm not exactly familiar with everybody's moves. Nevertheless, I'm more than interested to see how this match goes. From 
your deepest fears. She is Tarantula! Man, am I getting, I'm getting weird vibes off of this girl here. All these girls have some very unique uh, attires and looks to them. This one by far seems to be the weirdest looking to me. Well, not really the weirdest, but out of all of them so far, this one is not the tame one. But we haven't even gotten through all the competitors yet, so. into the ring, taking off her ring gear. You can only imagine how this match is going to end up. Again, relatively unknown to me, some of these characters and what they're capable of. So they're going to put on a show for us. Introducing next, from the Circus Gothica, he is E.K. The Clown! Okay, I think we found either Puke or Jay Blizzard's sister. While I haven't seen all the CAW shows, I have seen this one in action, and she can be pretty damn dangerous. Not to mention she's already a bit of a whack loon to begin with. out here and an applause on top of that well I don't know but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold oh so my okay, god I bought is that who I think it is ladies and gentlemen from stable two in the equestrian wasteland let us welcome to you little in my hand. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Little Pip is coming out here. This is gonna. Well, okay. Now I'm definitely getting some interest here. Good to me, and one showed me a spot. He said he knows. I can only. I, I can only imagine. How this match is gonna go? I can't wait for it to get started. But little Pip. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see her out here. Be interesting enough as it is. All around, with a Geiger counter in my hand. I'm going out to take me some government land. Uranium fever. And here we go. The ref calling for the bell. And here we go. And, and just as I said, a whole cluster. The ladies are all over the ring. I just watched O'Nee take little Pip down with a boot to the head. Now she's up. Now she's dealing with decay. I don't know where the hell the ref went here. I can't see him anywhere. Oh, he went down. 
And oh, wow. Tarantula over the top rope. on the floor, a little pip set over the top by Pokemon Girl. And Decay getting some win back, fighting with Oni in the ring. Oh, wow. Girls are all over each other. There's a spinning wheel kick by Trixie. And little pip and Pokemon Girl are still going at it out here. Wow. They're really going after each other. With an Irish whip, and there goes Decay over the top rope. Oh, wow. The girls are having no problem whipping each other over the top this time. It's a strong fight feel out here at Sable Beach Amusements, or at least the former Sable Beach Amusements. That's right, ladies and gents, we built our digital arena on top of the Sable Beach Amusements because, well, they shut it down. So, let's use it. Make a great place for a wrestling arena, and wow, Decay with a handspring knee drop on the floor, just slapped O'Neal across the face. Pokemon Girl DDT's Trixie and goes into a cover. We got a pin, one. No, Trixie kicked out at one. A little pimp putting a submission. Pokemon girl with a, by the looks of it, a spine buster. And oh, pimp set over the top rope. We got our set, whoa, what the hell? Interestingly enough, this is a Falls Count Anywhere match. On top of that, wow. Oh, Jesus. These girls are getting brutal out here. Pokemon Girl is setting up. And she's going to, oh boy. She's going to start off our uh, Sobble Beach Slam Fest festivities with a coast to coast drop kick from there. Flying Electric Rat! Off the top and over across the ring. One, two, three. Oh, we have a we have an elimination. I believe it was Tarantula. I believe Tarantula just got eliminated from the match. Oh wow. Little Pip choking Pokemon Girl out here. Decay is stuck in the corner. Trixie is going after her. Going to the top rope, over the top, off the top rope, superplex into the sand below. Yeah, we don't have mats outside the ring. We just took the beach sand and put it there. And Trixie going into a cover. I don't think he, I don't think she's getting up. One, two, three, and Decay has been eliminated from a superplex out to the floor. Pokemon girl with a nice suplex. Pack. Pump handle package pile driver by Neko Dark. One, two, three, and the package pile driver gets rid of little Pip. Wow. Oni wailing on Pokemon Girl. We got another pinfall. Trixie has been eliminated. And that's a shame, the great and powerful one eliminated from this match. I'm sure Rocket Isle backstage is probably throwing a shit fit. And oh wow, look at those kicks. Oh, catches Nico Dark right in the face. Dragon Lady is really bringing it to her. And oh God, one quarter to another, Oni just drops Pokemon Girl with a drop kick. Are we gonna see another elimination? I don't think she's gonna get up. One, 
two. No, Pokemon Girl kicked out somehow. Pokemon Girl kicking out. Uh-oh. She might not kick out of that. Tombstone pile driver. And Pokemon Girl rolls out of the ring. Very, usually a wise move, but this is a false count anywhere match. And now Oni turning her attention to Neko Dark. Hitting her with a reverse DDT. Going for a cover. Ref goes for the count. One, two, three. And Neko Dark has been eliminated. Oh, we're down to Dragon Lady. Ne uh, hmm, excuse me. Dragon Lady, Oni, and Pokemon Girl, who seems to still be out of it on the floor. He's just sitting there. I don't think Pokemon Girl even realizes what year this is. Oh no, she's getting up. And Dragon Lady measuring Oni here. What's she gonna try? Nope, nothing. She's just gonna get back in the ring. Pokemon Girl tried to interject herself. Oh, arm bar. Oh! And Pokemon Girl deliberately getting involved, tried for a German suplex. Dragon Lady landed on her feet, missed a roundhouse kick there. Pokemon Girl with a nice back suplex. Would have been a taunting, and anybody who's been in the wrestling, in the extreme battlefield rather, knows that taunting is usually not the best idea. There's a nice neck snap, though, as Pokemon Girl is now taking control of Dragon Lady. A bit more. Yeah, doing a bit more showboating than you're actually doing the wrestling there, girl. It's going to come back to bite you. And another neck snap. Dragon Lady not putting any kind of an offense here. One, two, and Dragon Lady kicks out. Oh, and Oni kicks her right in the back of the head. Irish whip into the corner. Oni following Pokemon Girl in. Pokemon Girl locks her in an arm bar. And... Works her around. Pokemon Girl. Oh, oh, wow. Half Nelson suplex. Dropping Oni right on the back of her head. Dragon Lady with a nice German suplex of her own. Uh-oh. Oh! An underhook, a reverse suplex. And Dragon Lady got dropped. Oni drops the Pokemon Girl. And, oh, Oni locking in a Boston Crab here. And the ref is running around the ring like an idiot. Didn't even bother asking. Pokemon Girl managed to break the hold, and she's taunting. Very bad idea. Oni just had you in a submission hold, girl. You're not out of the woods yet. And, oh, into the turnbuckle. And Pokemon Girl is taking Oni to the limit here. Oni back up, grabs a hold of her. Oh, Tombstone! Pokemon Girl just got dropped like a bad habit. And right into the pin. One, two, three. Pokemon Girl is done. And Dragon Lady grabbing a hold. Oh, the mission hold applied on Oni. Is Oni going to tap out or pass out? She's got nowhere to go. She's nowhere near the ropes. Can't call for the break. Are we going to get a submission? She's trying her dandas. She made it out. Oni was lucky. She made it out of the hole. The Dragon Lady, I thought she had this match won. Trying to go for the tombstone there. There's a counter. And oh, Dragon Lady hung out to try on the top rope. advantage, nice knee lift, and throws Oni into the corner, follows her in, went for a hip attack, and her ass hit the top turnbuckle hard. Oni picks up the Dragon Lady and drops her with a gorilla press. Dragon Lady with an arm bar and an arm breaker. Desperately, oh wow, laying in some kicks here, and oh, what a roundhouse right to the face. 
Oh, he is down. One, two, three, and the Dragon Lady picks up the win here. Very nice roundhouse. Here's some of the action from before. Knee drop, handspring knee drop from DK, and then that tombstone she took on the floor. Pokemon girl. Very nice sidewalk slam. Girls took a lot of abuse out here. Here is your winner, the Dragon Lady. Again, CAW doesn't cease to impress. They're up. They're obviously getting some fans out here tonight. Make sure to take, uh, make sure to keep an eye open for them as our next match is about to begin. And this is a special interpromotional fight. Armageddon is stepping into the extreme battlefield here, representing the company. Two tough guys about to take each other on, and ironically enough, both of them have B at the beginning of their name. Interpromotional XPWL versus YWL match. Currently on his way to the ring representing XPWL from Chroma City. He is known as Walking Armageddon. He is Ultimate Hardcore. He is Violet! And again, Violet's taking part in this special interpromotional match. We were looking for an opponent for the guy that was going to be facing him tonight. This Vangelico guy, or Vangelico, I, I, I have no idea how to pronounce his name. I'm very sorry, people in MIWL, I really am. His opponent, representing the YWL. This is Vangelico! Vangelico, a resident tough guy in YWL. I'm sure these two have locked up at least once before. But that was on YWL's terms. This time, I'm pretty sure he wants to secure a win here. Maybe send a message to Violance for showing up on their programming. Here we go. And immediately right out of the gate, a hard lariat. Violance is usually the one used to giving out the lariats. Angelico hit him with one right at the beginning of the match, and look at this! Gorilla Press slam! This guy's a beast! And Violance rolls out of the ring to regroup. I've never seen that happen. Violance having trouble dealing with this guy, picks him up, nice back suplex, and finally putting on a bit of a... Oh, trying to set himself up into a position where he could take control, and again, Vangelico is just all over him. 
I mean, this guy's a machine. Violence now, after a back body drop, trying to feign him off. Irish whip into the rope, hard knee lift. Another one to the other side. And Violence pulling him into a Russian leg sweep, trying to wear the guy down. This powerhouse is actually, he's really got Violence's attention here. Hard kick to the back of the head. And a stomp. Violence is determined he is going to humiliate Vangelico. The thing that gets me about this whole ordeal is Vangelico basically was overpowering him. And there we go again. The double leg pick up and now he's hammering on Violence. Violence is not taking him seriously enough and he is coming at him full throttle. Tries to grab Violence's legs. Violence finally pulls himself back up to his feet. Slams his arm into the canvas and he's going up to the top rope here. Violence is trying to coax Vangelico to get back up. Off the top, oh, nice clothesline. Violence daring him to get back up. Goes for a pin, one, no, only a one. I didn't think Vangelico was done that soon. And yeah, just like I figured, trying to mount some offense, went for another lariat, this time Violence caught him. Oh, jawbreaker. Uh-oh, Violence caught, German suplex, and Vangelico is holding on. Is he gonna go for a trifecta here? He's got two. One more, and he's got it. Violence just got rocked. One, two, and Violence kicks out. Not much authority on that kick out, though. I mean, he had the ring awareness to know that it was a two count, but he didn't kick out very hard. And oh, wow. Angelico putting Violence in a submission. What is that, the rings of Saturn, I think. And Violence finally gets his arm free and hammers into Vangelico. And there's that lariat. One, two, and Vangelico got up. And look at Violence's face. He can't believe it. He thought he had him right there. He caught him completely by surprise. But no luck. Vangelico throwing Violence out on the apron here. Hammers him. He's gonna bring him back in the hard way. Sets him up. Superplex. Picks the big man up. Deadlifts him off the apron. That is some strength. One, two, and again, Violence kicks out. And oh, leg drop by Vangelico. Tries to pick the Violence up, and Violence with an uppercut. And a gut wrench suplex. Nicely done. Oh, Fireman's carry. And now Violence back down again. Vangelico is just hammering the hell out of him. Look for another cover here. One. No, only a one this time. And another Lariat. One, two, and another kick out. Angelico utilizing the Lariat, something that Violence is more famous for in XBWL. And oh my God, he hit him with another one. He is determined to take Violence down. Tried a fourth one and Violence caught him this time. I can't believe that. He tried for four clotheslines. Three of them in a row for God's sake. And Violence is just pounding on him now. And Vangelico up against the ropes and look at Violence. He just told him, I'm taking you out. 
Uh oh. Throws Vangelico out on the air. Oh no. This is the same thing he did that put Stone Cold Drew Blue out of action. Off the apron into the sand. Pile driver off the apron. And Violence falling to Vangelico out here on the floor. And a DDT into the sand. He's already been piled driven into it. He's trying to fight back. Violence is not having any of it. We're up to five, and these two are in a slug fest. And oh, into the corner, and oh, he got squashed. Violence stretching a bit. I don't know what he's intending to do here. Oh, grabs him by the throat. Is he going for a choke slam? Oh! The Lariat didn't work. Let's try a choke slam. We got a two, we got a three, and Violence picks up the victory. Big props to Vangelico. The man came out here looking to make a statement, and he kept up with violence for quite a while in this fight. I mean, there's that lariat, but again, Vangelico not only hit him with a lariat, he hit him with it almost four separate times in this match, hitting him at the beginning and hitting him twice, twice right on target, or later on in the match. He went for a third one, and violence caught him. There's one of them. Only garnering a two count. There's the pile driver off the apron right into the sand. Here is your winner. Violence picking up the victory for XBWL. Since there's still time left in the day, he'll probably be going down to the beach to catch a swim or whatever else he plans to do before we're on the road again. That being said, well, somebody's teleprompter's broken. I believe this is IWF's contribution. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we're hearing Ravishing Ronald's theme. Sexy boy. The following contest is brought to you by the IWF. And it is a six-man tag team match. Currently on their way to the ring, representing the Blood Bowl team of the same name. This is the Brothers in Charge. on his way out here. Their opponents, first, one half of the IWF Tag Team Champions. This is the Ultramarine! First, the Ultramarine. Very, very tough powerhouse. 
The guy kind of looks like he could be Gunlock's brother, except he's twice his size, both in physical, both in physical stature and height. The man is huge. Great fighter, though. And he looks raring to go, getting the crowd going. to get the fight started. He doesn't care about the next person that comes out. Wow, look at that mug. That's a face only a mother could love. And even then, I'm pretty sure she has to look away. And ladies and gentlemen, the final participant in this team, this is... And another one heavily armored here coming out here. The Brothers and Charms are going to have their hands full with these guys, I can tell. The Ultramarine and Drax walking around the ring here trying to get their own Baron. Here we go, six man tag team tornado action as the bell rings and immediately the Brothers and Charms charging. And Dragzar sends one of them over the top rope. Unfortunately from this distance it is very hard to tell who's going after who here. So I'm just going to I'm just going to try to keep an eye on it as best I can, and try to keep an eye on who is fighting and tell you which which of the per oh, people on the opposite team is fighting here. For example, right now Grax is getting hammered into the ropes over there on the other side of the ring. He just got shoved. Gragzar shoves one of the brothers away, and Grax actually went to lower ground. Tried to go for a suplex, it did not happen. There's a hard punch right to the mouth. And the Ultramarine and Thragzar have got two of the brothers right out here in front of this capacity crowd. And Drax having his own fair share of problems here. Got a two count on the, ult the Ultramarine, tried to go for a cover. And Drax throwing his opponent back into the ring as he follows him back in. It is very hard to tell which one of the three is who. Ravishing Ronald, Handsome Hammond. The two of them are and the two of them are the ones I'm most familiar with because, well, I have to deal with Ronald, and everywhere Ronald is, Hammond isn't too far behind. Oh. But they are mauling. Drax in the ring right now. The Ultramarine is down. Dragzar almost took one of their heads off. And again, Dragzar mauling one of the brothers, the Ultramarine. Oh! He went into the stairs and Rax managed a high power move. I mean full throttle. He drove him into the mat as hard as he could. 
Back strike for a reverse suplex. He got a counter though. And he gets nailed with a vertical as Thragzar starts pounding. No, he got interrupted. Ultramarine slamming one of them into the stand face first. With that helmet on though, I doubt it's gonna do much damage. into a clusterfuck here. Whoa. Hard shot by the Ultramarine. Not even bothering to worry about the armor. Just going. Oh, what a pile driver. Cracks with a hard lariat. The Ultramarine measuring. Uh-oh. Up. And, oh, capture suplex attempt coming. Grabs a hold of him and over. And is he gonna hold it? No. Uh-oh, off the top of the big splash. One, two, and the Ultramarine almost had the win there. Whoa, what a chop. Almost took the guy's head off right there. Rax getting back to his feet, Rags are no boating a little bit, he shouldn't have been doing that. Rax with a hard kick to the gut. Another chop. The Ultramarine and Rax are getting forced into the corner together. Everybody's all over the damn place. Thragzar's recovering on the floor. Which means it's a three on two beat down here for the Ultramarine and Grax here. Oh wow! And there Thrags are running in to help Grax there, running over. I believe. No, I can't tell from this. Di I can't tell from this distance. And Grax is getting pounded here. Ragsar tried for a heavy shot, did not work. Oh, Iron Claw slam! Ultramarine gets up, flips him upside down and pile drives him. Look for a cover, no luck there. Oh! Ragsar with a heavy shot. Let's it open another of the Brothers in Charms. Going for a late pinfall. I don't know why the hell he tried doing it now. Uh-oh. Gunlock put to sleep there. Oh! Ultramarine is down. Dope slam. I think I might have just called uh, the Ultramarine Gunlock by mistake. I apologize. He is not going to be happy with me when he finds that out. Rax rolls out to the floor. The Ultramarine is down. Ragsar going for a punch. And he did not connect 100%. Oh. I think the Ultramarine accidentally hit his own partner. I think Ragsar is bleeding from the Ultramarine hitting him in the head knee first. Guys, hard shots in a big clothesline. And Rax pounding. One. Nope, another interruption. Ragsar is back in the ring, trying to get some cover going for the Ultramarine. And Rax here going for a power bomb, holds it. One. And Cracks gets the pinfall! Cracks with a great pinfall there! I'm really impressed there. Everybody else was too busy, they didn't pay attention to what he was doing. He managed to hit the power bomb and he looked before he did it. Here are your winners, the team of Pro.
Greg's are Rex and the Ultramarine. And those three earned it. Rex sneaking a victory there with that power bomb. Very impressive. As we move on to our next contest, which has been provided by these lovely ladies who every once in a while have come to our shows and would like to showcase their talents, ladies and gentlemen. So please enjoy this next match. The following contest is an eight woman elimination match. Currently on her way down to the ring, this is Cursed Shade. The cursed variant of Dark Shade as she makes her way down to the ring here. That that crown, that eerie looking crown with those glowing purple eyes. Damn, she really went in, she really went the full mile with her entrance gear. Now let's see. Her opponent, this is the Cursed all of these women looking to make names for themselves. A little bit of a showcase. All of them good friends with Antoine the Zebra, who of course is our Cruiserweight Champion on the main roster as well. What's not to like about these lovely ladies? Very impressive with the fireworks show here, ladies. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome match. Her theme seems to keep changing. I'm not sure what's going on here. Either way, I'm not going to complain. We're getting some. Uh, we're getting some awesome wrestling action. Why would I complain? Either way, it'll be interesting to see these girls in action. of them that I actually know who actually frequent our XBWL shows so I kind of have my uh, I, as, as a commentator I'm not supposed to but I do have stakes in this match there are a few women in this match that I do know and I do like oh boy here she comes someone's about to get their ass kicked Reaper looks 
dressed for war. And ironically enough, that would be the best appropriate attire for what she's going to do. Nevertheless, Reaper looks ready. He's been gone for a while, actually. Uh, she, took, uh, she took a bit of a hiatus off from her uh, usual traveling and actual wrestling. Unfortunately, um, I'm, not, I'm not at liberty to explain the reason why. No offense to you all, but at the same time, while everybody's here, kind of on the debut here on an XBWL show, uh, Reaper has taken a bit of a break from wrestling for a while, so this is her first official match back after a long while, so I'm hoping she doesn't have too much in the way of ring rust. And their opponent, this is Tannis the Dragon! Tannis making her way out here. I believe she's one of the tallest girls in this match. You think you know me? Nice. Very nice. Oh, the splits and right up into the ring. Very impressive. Girls look ready to go. I think it's only two more women left before this match officially starts. competitors in this match alone. He is very, very, very big. Like I'd like to get an accurate I'd like to get an accurate reading on her actual height. But the truth is is that I don't have any way of doing that right now. And unfortunately our our forms only go up to seven foot four. Actually, not really a uh, not really a wrestler when uh, the Magitex first met her, but ever since they got bit by the wrestling bug, it seems that Pyro Shadiac wanted to put her stakes in it. 
can only imagine how she's going to do in this match. And the final participant. It is Rain Cloud. Introducing the final participant in this match, Rain Cloud. We've got ourselves a bit of a uh, identity crisis here. We've got a cursed Rain Cloud and we've got a regular Rain Cloud in this match. Right, the ref is ready, the bell is ringing, and here we go. Oh wow, and everybody is really getting off to a rough start here. Oh, dark shade over the top rope. Tan I believe, yes it is, that's Tannis going after her. Helen busy with Wimsip. Myra Shadiak dealing with first rain cloud. dealing with the regular one. And everybody's all over the damn place making it very hard for the ref to figure out who to look at. Oh, what a suplex. Cloud is dancing around the ring here. Pyro Shadiac, I believe, has got a hold of her, takes her down. Oh, wow. Shadiac hanging up. Rain Cloud on the ropes there. As Helen and Fibzip continue to brawl out here. And oh! First Rain Cloud trying to get involved. Darkshade and Tannis still exchanging blows out there. Darkshade can't knock Tannis down with running attacks. Tries to pick her up, nice backbreaker. Got a pinball attempt here, only a one count though. And Darkshade with a nice Hurricane Rana. Trying to go for a head scissors, no luck there. Darkshade and Tannis are almost heading all the way, and we're heading up the uh, dock. And Helen slamming Femzeb head first into the post. Oh, wow, hits her again against the post. Reaper just ate a mouthful of sand. Ink Cloud, whoa, with a kick. Oh, neck breaker. Reaper grabbing Curse Dark Shade by the hair and takes her head first into the apron. Oh, power bomb attempt here. Vincent going for cover, one. Two, only a two count though. Man, are these girls going at it. And again, Darkshade and Tana seem to be going up the aisle way here. First Jade, I should be saying, sorry. Dropping Tannis on the concrete here. There, oh wow, dropped her right on the dock. First rain cloud getting out of the ring. There goes 
I believe Pyro Shaniac just went over the top rope. Reaper's going out after her. Mimzeb drops Helen, and she's measuring her. Darkshade holding onto a German suplex here. Mimzeb picks up Helen into a full sit-out powerbomb. Let's recover one, two, and only a two count as Helen gets up. Mimzeb with a clubbing blow to the back. Bicycle kick. Helen catching Femzev right in the face. One, two, three. And Helen has eliminated Femzev. And she goes looking for another person to take on. And I believe she's looking at Reaper. There, Helen got interrupted. Lots of, lots of stuff happening on the floor here. Not too much in the ring. It's oh wow, first dark, er, first rain cloud just got hung up on the ropes. Reaper and Helen both in the ring. Dark first shade, rain cloud, and oh wow. Rain cloud and curse rain cloud now exchanging blows. Got a one count there. Candice could not keep Reaper down. Kicks her in the back of the head. First shade going for a cover here on Vincent, er, on Helen, and Helen is now out. We're down to six. Oh, Reaper gets clubbed in the back of the head by first shade. Tried to go for a suplex, no luck. Reaper went right over top and caught her with a clothesline. Oh. And again, Rain Cloud and Curse Rain Cloud back to attacking each other. What a kick. There could be only one, and I believe that just sealed the deal. One, two, three, and there's only one Rain Cloud in this match now. Oh, wow. Whoa, Reaper with a spear out of nowhere catching the... Surprise rain cloud and getting a three count. He literally out of nowhere just turned around and just took her out. Oh, suplex. Reaper went to measure Iro Shadiac, but it did not happen. Shadiac played. Incapacitating Tannis and now stomping on her arm. Reaper now trying to get involved. No luck. Shadiac, he's determined to keep going. Hurts Reaper puts her up in the tree of woe and is choking her in the corner. Shade and Tannis again, and Reaper and Shadiac. Oh, far away slam off the second rope. And Shadiac wisely rolls out to the floor. One, two, three. And Tannis gets eliminated by Reaper. And Curse Shade walks right into that. Picks her up. And Jackhammer. One, two, three. First Shade is gone. It's down to Pyro Shaniac and Reaper. That quick. 
Shadiak immediately with a snap suplex. And oh! Ace Crusher. And Pyra Shadiak picks up the win here. Wow, take a look at some of this action here. Oh, backbreaker onto Femzev. Helen was out to do some damage tonight. Wow, these girls all put on a one hell of a show tonight. Oh. Here is your winner, Pyro Shadiac. Ira Shadiak coming out, beating all odds, beat some of the biggest girls here, and got the final decision here. Did a great job in this match. And now we move on to the main event of this pre-show part. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a Steam Division Special Champion versus Champion match. Currently on his way down to the aisle. From Victoria, Texas. The man likes to call himself the lady's favorite dick. And he is the XPWL Twitch Champion. Richard Cannon! There's a party in my pants and you're invited. A big fiesta in my trousers, I'm excited. I'm so happy. I can't help but say I'm a little surprised. This man, he made it to the he made it pretty far in the YouTube tournament and almost became the YouTube champion. Now here he is. Not even two months later with the Twitch Championship. I guess it shouldn't be that surprising, but we weren't expecting to actually have a Steam Division match on our pay-per-view tonight. So this will be a treat for us, too, as the Steam Division is kind of our farming ground for new talent that might be showing up in the WWE 2K20 game next year. We don't know yet. I like to switch things up every once in a while. Nevertheless, that brings us to Richard's opponent. Nick is going to be in some deep trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, formerly from Bombay, India. He now makes his home in New York City, New York. The man is a living legend in XPWL and your current XPWL YouTube champion, Abu Malik Akul. Abu going all the way through the YouTube tournament to capture that championship which he has proudly held on to and defended. He's had it for quite he's had it for quite a while since winning the tournament. He has had uh, at least two title defenses since then. Both of them he's come out on top. And tonight it's a non-title match, so he doesn't have to worry about defending his title. Because, unfortunately, if we were going to have him defend his title, 
we'd have to stream on Twitch as well, and Twitch Championship would have to be up for grabs as well. So for tonight only, these two are in a champion versus champion non-title match. As Richard and Abu stare at each other from across, opposite sides of the ring, and the bell rings, and here we go. And immediately, Richard grabs a hold of Abu and picks him up in a beautiful vertical suplex to start us off here. And Abu rolls out of the ring, very wise move. Grabs a hold of Richard and puts him in a neck breaker. And grabs Richard by the neck and STO right into the canvas, thrilling him head first. Richard with a nice counter for the clothesline. I don't want to call him Dick, but I'm going to end up doing it anyway, so fuck it. Nick Cannon trying to, uh, hoping to hit his finisher. And Abu hoping to put his finisher on. Abu hoping to hit the camel clutch. Nick Cannon. Uh, he is expecting and really hoping to hit his finisher, which is because his entire, it, because it seems his entire gimmick is a huge dick joke, it's no surprise that his finisher would be called the deep throat. And these two are brawling out here on the floor. Oh wow, what a butterfly suplex by Abu. They gotta be careful there. There is still concrete on the parking lot. I mean, we didn't build a completely new building. Oh, wow. Richard missing part of that uh, sand that we have set up around the ring. Back in goes Abu, really focusing on uh, Richard's shoulders and neck. Probably trying to set him up for that camel clutch. Mix him up, fireman's carry, and oh, what a gut buster. And, oh, Abu off the ropes here. Oh, what a drop kick. I don't think Dick knows where he is at the moment. Uh-oh. Oh, flips him over, and oh, wow, Abu laying into him with knee lifts. And oh, what a hard one right to the face. And I think Richard's bleeding, and the referee out of position to Richard kicked out. Abu with some stiff strikes, busted him right open. Richard with a counter, and it all oh, hammered him in the head. Richard bringing in the kendo stick, something that Abu knows quite well in his career. You'll take note, he has various scars across his body. That's from basically getting it hit by practically every weapon known to man. He's been in every single wrestling game that a Rocket Isle has ever owned, dating, all, well, the ones that let you create wrestlers anyway, dating all the way back to WWF Warzone. And I gotta tell you, he has been hit by literally every weapon you can think of. Those scars are not just for show. The man is a grizzled veteran, and he is punishing the young Dick Cannon. Dick landing face first on the canvas. He is a mess. Abu is sensing victory here. Hard. Shoulder block, another one. Third one, no. Cannon throws him over the top. And Abu's going to the top. Rick, turn around. And oh, off the top of the double axe handle. Abu is fired up here. And oh, an exploder suplex. Abu has really honed his craft in the time that he has been wrestling for the XBWL. Well, as every other place he's ended up. And Richard.
Richard. Oh, right across Abu's knee with the kendo stick. There's another scar for you, Abu. And Richard now drilling Abu's head into the canvas. And Rick is, oh, he's setting him up for something here. Going for a kick. Uh-oh. He's going for the aphrodisiac. Oh, wow. Twisted him right out over like a pretzel. The ref. One, two, and no. Richard frustrated and screaming at the ref. He's, oh, he's measuring Abu. Is he going to hit him with another one? This alternate finisher that he's developed uh, called the aphrodisiac. And he's hit Abu with it twice and slid right into the pinfall again. One, two, and almost. But I got to tell you, the referee was slow on that one. And even Rick, he's getting mad. And now he's taunting. Very bad idea. He gives Abu an inch. He's going to walk all over him. Oh, what a forearm. And another one. And Abu caught in a, caught in a spine buster. And uh-oh. Are we going to see him do it? No, we're not. Rick is not bothering going for the deep throat. I don't know why. Oh, picks him up. And a, oh. Face buster. Nabu tossed outside, and again, Richard is taunting. As he moves outside, Abu again taking advantage of the fact that Rick has hurt himself. He is a bloody mess. And oh, a gut buster again by Abu, and Abu turning him around. What the hell is he doing? Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, he's applying the camel clutch on the floor. Well, you can't win out on the floor, Abu. You got to get him to tap out in the ring. But, oh, wow. I think he actually knocked, I think he actually knocked Rick out. No, he didn't. Rick played possum. Slamming Abu's head into the, into the sand out here. Hard kick to the back of the leg there by Abu. And these two are still brawling. And uh-oh, oh no, another face buster. Got a pinball attempt here, one, two, and Abu kicks out. And Rick is irate. Abu takes his legs out from under him. They're still going. And oh, flips him over and another set of knee strikes. Really going after that spot that he busted open earlier. And going for a pin this time. One, two, and Rick kicked out again. I can't believe it. Abu is now getting upset. Tries to pick Rick up, back body drop. Got him out of that one real quick. with a getting kicked right in the leg and uh oh another aphrodisiac coming up and oh again just thrilled one two and no abu kicked out again and wow look at rick's face He's gonna try again Another aphrodisiac on the way. Abu has taken four of these. Twice in a row on two separate occasions. One, two, and again Abu kicks out. And Rick is throwing a fit here. Going up to the top rope here. And he's measuring Abu. Is he gonna get him though? Off the top here, elbow drop attempted. No, Abu knocked, knocked him down. He's got a hold of him again, and oh, what a knee lift right to the face. Dick goes out to the floor, and Abu's going out after him. Levels him. 
And oh, another gut buster. And oh no, another knee lift combination. And again, Rick is going to need some plastic surgery or something because I think his nose is broken. Oh wow, right into the steps. And again, Dick keeps fighting back. Tried to pick him up, no luck there. And these two are getting into a slugfest out here. be out on his feet at this point. Oh, up and over, and another striking combination by the knees. And drills him. I'm not sure what Abu is doing here, letting, letting Rick recover or what. Yeah, Rick is a mess. We're gonna have to really get him looked at after this match is over. Rick, oh, going for a pile driver in the sand and dropped a boo. The boo going for some chops, catching Rick right in the throat. And he's going for a pin here. One. Two, three, and Abu wins. I think he just wore Rick out. I mean, all of those knee strikes. I mean, they were right on target, right in the face. Here's a look at some of the action here. But again, this is after he was busted open the very first time. XPWL YouTube Champion, Abu Malik Aku! And Abu showing why he's the XPWL YouTube Champion. Put on a hell of a show here. We'll be heading into our next match very soon on the main card. The XPWL Tag Team Championship is about to be decided. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the XPWL Tag Team Championship. Tyson Echo Jones saying they were coming back here and they were gonna walk out the winners, but again, they yield a lot of size and weight to their opponents. And Jones, he actually looks pretty good. He's sporting his, uh, some of his uh, old techno look. Really nice. Oh boy, here we go. ominous appearance of these two. It's absolutely horrifying to see these two not only coming out with those masks, those gigantic friggin' hammers, but also the fact that they're the tag team champions. Either way, if it were up to me, those titles wouldn't even be on those two considering the tirade they have actually been on these last couple of weeks. 
I mean, they help triple power bomb a girl with another girl, but oh, by the way, but that doesn't excuse the factor that they helped her power bomb her to the mat and almost all the way to hell. Nevertheless, these two defending the tag team championship tonight. Later tonight, their benefactor, Twyla Meta, is in action against Clint. These two are ready. And this is what it's all about for these two uh, teams. The XBWL Tag Team Championship on the line. And again, I still don't see Ice and Jones coming out of this fresh as a daisy. Introducing first, the challengers from the future and the big city respectively. They are Ice and Techno Jones. And their opponents from Dark Side. They are the reigning and defending XPWL Tag Team Champions. Baba Black Sheep and the Ailing Sheep. They are the Lost Soul. go and the rev holding up the tag titles high and it seems we'll have ailing sheep and ice starting things off and the bell rings and immediately ice taken right over the top rope wow ailing sheep not wasting any time going after the smaller ice and ice using his speed Try to keep ahead of the big guy. Oh wow, what a shot. Ice already reeling from a clothesline over the top rope, but he's still fighting. He can't seem to get the big man off his feet. Oh, hold on. We're up to seven. And Ailing Sheep finally back in the ring. And Ice is getting mauled here. Oh, wow, headbutt. Ice, Irish whip into the corner. And, oh, he tried to do something. And, oh, Ailing Sheep taking Techno Jones off the apron. Ice gets clothesline. Ice arm drag takeover. Ice now with a snap mare and a kick to the back. And then Chief takes his legs out from under him and steps on top of him. Oh my god. Trying to crush Ice. And Ice taking a heavy shot to the face. Got a chip of tooth there. Slams Ailing Sheep into the turnbuckle. Ailing Sheep counters it and sends Ice careening into the opposite side. And oh no, no, not now. Real early for them to be doing this, but nevertheless, Ice is getting the absolute crap stomped out of him. And the Sheep keep alternating. might be out here. Jones getting into the ring and he interrupts the count. And Ailing Sheep sends Techno Jones flying over the top. Ice 
finally tagging in Techno Jones, who's been itching to get into this match. Wow, flying knee lift. And he didn't knock the Black Sheep down. But he is flying, and that time he got him. Hard forearm shot to the forehead, and Black Sheep got rocked. Trying to use as many aggressive moves as he can, and his quickness. Nice Hurricane Rana actually got the Black Sheep over. Oh, what a hit. Almost got flat there, and again a flying knee lift. Black Sheep is not going down, but he's definitely feeling those blows. Irish Whip off the ropes here and a boot, and Jones finally taken down. Now the Ailing Sheep has been tagged in. Going after Jones's legs, that's never really a good idea. Like his legs are like an extra sensory thing. Trying to take Ailing Sheep back to his corner. Ailing Sheep will not let him. Picks him up for a sidewalk slam. And Jones snips himself right back up, but he missed the drop kick. Suplex coming. No, Jones counters. And look at that. Look at that strength. Jones picking up Ailing Sheep and actually suplexing him. Jones throwing the ailing sheep into the corner. Irish fit. Ref goes down. Went for a kick. No luck there. And oh, he didn't miss that one though. Jones with another Irish whip. And oh, ran in after him and got caught with a Uranagi. Ailing sheep now grabbing Jones by the hair. And a jawbreaker stopped that one. And Jones, what the hell is he doing? Oh, detonation kick. He picked up Ailing Sheep and actually collided with the detonation kick. Black Sheep gets in the ring and goes after him. And immediately Jones attacked Black Sheep. Sneaks out of the ring. Black Sheep trying to get uh, Ailing Sheep to wake up, trying to cheer him back towards his corner. He might be in some deep trouble here after take the, taking the detonation kick though. Uh-oh, Bull Nelson slam, and look at the height on that drop. Jones went straight up and straight down. Punch to the gut, oh, kick, and an STO. Ailing Sheep is doing his best to try to keep himself in control. Sidewalk slam. And into a pin, one, two, and Ice breaks it up. If Ice hadn't, I thought that would have been over. And oh my God, Black Sheep dropping Ice right on top of Jones. And Jones again, doing his best here. Hard spinning wheel kick, another one. Underneath and into a spinning neck breaker. Uh-oh, an ailing sheet made it to his corner to tag out, and he runs Jones over. Oh, Jones with a cutter out of nowhere. And Jones is actually daring him to get up. XMI, oh my god. Oh, detonation kick again. Jones catching Black Sheep out of nowhere with it. One, two, and only a two count. And the oh wow. Jones got angry going after going after Ailing Sheep. And he accidentally uh, drilled the referee with a drop kick. Uh-oh. Black Sheep spinning it out. Oh, spin out sidewalk slam. But the ref's out, he can't go for a cover. Oh no, not again! Oh. oh, what a boot, and Jones is bleeding! Techno Jones is bleeding profusely from his face after taking the big boot to the head. 
got a pin. One, two. Oh my God, barely. Techno Jones barely kicked out. Jones with a hard knee lift. Jones trying to make a comeback here. Tried for another cutter, but he didn't make it. Body blows. Almost cracked him over the side of the head. There's a knee lift. Jones throwing Black Sheep into his corner. No luck. Black Sheep returns the favor. And we've got another double team move coming. Hard body shot. Spinning kick by Jones. He actually kicked him and knocked him off his feet. hard here to stay in this. Tyson Jones have put on a hell of a go here trying to actually win the tag titles despite being so severely disadvantaged. Jones overpowered but got right back up on his feet and hits a hurricanrana very nice. Sheep grabs a hold of Jones. Irish whip. We got another double team move, and Jones goes face first into Black Sheep's boot. Oh no, not again. Another boot to the face. And another pinfall attempt. And here comes Ice into the ring, too. And Ice barely got there. Uh oh. Oh. Hailing Sheep falling ice and sending him packing. Jones probably really could have used that tag. Ice is out on the floor on the wrong side of the ring. Jones off the top of the 450. Not going for the cover though. Went for a high kick. Black Sheep caught it. Oh, punch to the gut. Jones is doing anything to keep in this. Detonation kick again. He goes for the cover. Ailing Sheep immediately getting in the ring. Oh, but he didn't make it. He wasn't paying attention. We've got new tag team champions. Ailing Sheep screwed up big time here. He missed his cue to break up the tag. And look at Jones and Ice pounding on these two. I guess this is retribution for what they did to Brittany. These two are kicking the hell out of the lost ones here. Get them out of the ring. Knocks them out to the floor. Couldn't have happened to two nicer dudes. New tag team champions, Ice and Techno Jones. On top of that, our next match coming up, the Cruiserweight Championship is up for grabs. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the XPWL Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> We go. The prize fighter is on his way. The big guy, well, not really a big guy. This guy has done it pretty much all in XPWL. He's a former world champion. He's a former international champion. I think the only thing he hasn't captured outside of uh, the Steam Division titles are the tag team titles. Other than that, he's pretty much done it all. And now tonight, he's challenging for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World, something he's also held a couple, a couple of times. That being said, 
He's going up against the current champion, who I got to admit, he's got a wicked, wicked roundhouse kick. Here he comes. It is a wonderful thing for in-game tracks, isn't it? Both of these guys have them, and I couldn't be happier. As Antoine, the Zip Zip, makes his way down here. He's been waiting for this chance. Butcher won the opportunity to face Antoine for the Cruiserweight title. He's been, Antoine's been anticipating this match. And as far as I can tell, if he's not ready now, he never was. So he's going in here against the wrestling machine. And everybody says that Antoine's at a severe disadvantage just because of Butcher's repertoire. But that remains to be seen as Antoine has proven time and time again that he has been a multiple time Cruiserweight Champion and when it comes to championship matches, he puts on his A game. That being said, let's go down to ringside for the announcements. Introducing first the challenger from Chicago, Illinois. He is the wrestling machine, Nick Butcher. and his opponent from France. He is the current reigning and defending XPWL Cruiserweight Champion. He is the Zip Zip, Antoine the Zebra! We got a lively crowd here in Sable Beach tonight. Whoever had the teleprompter and it kept saying Toronto and Hamilton, just letting you know, management's got a message back to me. You guys in the production truck, you're fired. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, replace you sooner or later, we hope. That being said, let's do this. As Butcher and Antoine wait for the opening bell. And here we go. And immediately going into trying to out-wrestle the wrestling machine. I don't know if this is a good idea. Antoine, though, taking advantage, getting him in the headlock. I think that might have been a spot. Whoa, Butcher not taking too kindly to that. Taking Antoine and clotheslining him right over the top rope. And, oh, God, suplex. Belly to back suplex right into the sand out here on the floor. And picking up Antoine right off the bat, and no, Antoine off the shoulders and hits a reverse DDT. Up going for Hurricane Rana, and again, Butcher collides with the sand and a kick to the back of the head. Sends him rolling for cover. Another drop kick. Another Hurricane Rana, wow! Antoine trying to outflash and out-wrestle him. Duplex attempt coming up here, and Antoine with a nice counter. Our knee lift and a gut buster. Antoine going for cover out here on the floor, one. No, no luck there. Hard shot right to Nick. That mare and into a kick. Butcher sending Antoine flying. Tried to go for a drop kick and missed. Antoine has been scouting Butcher quite well, but he didn't scout him that well, good enough. Face first, right into the ring post. Butcher taking advantage of the fact that they're fighting on the floor. Antoine with a nice uppercut. 
and trying to get the fans going. Butcher throwing Antoine back into the ring. And oh, hard shot to the back, and Antoine catching Butcher out of nowhere with that roundhouse kick of his. And he's going for a cover. One, two, three. Antoine knocked Butcher out in one kick. What a shot. They get back to some of the action. There's the gut buster on the floor that only got a one count. And of course, Butcher getting, uh, getting Antoine back in the ring, but as soon as he tried to mount offense, Antoine spun around and kicked his head clean off. I don't know where the hell Butcher's head is, but I guess check maybe the 14th, 15th throw back. The winner of this match and still XBWL Cruiserweight Champion, Antoine the Zebra! Antoine pulling off a hell of a victory tonight. Antoine holding that belt high as well he should. And now we are getting ready for our next contest. The XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship is on the line. Here we go. Just waiting on the participants and that music, oh, it isn't their usual theme. They're coming out to this one because they're apparently going to war. Lightning Dustbine and Stardust Glamour earning the right to challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship. Currently on their way to the ring, being accompanied by Carrot Core from Aperture Science. They are Lightning Dustvine and Stardust Glamour, the number one contenders to the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship. The Magitek Freak Hunters! I talked to the Magitex earlier today, and they earned this shot. They've been actually rather humble about it, basically saying it doesn't matter what the outcome is going to be in the end, they know they're going to be champions someday. But on the uh, opposite end, Dustbine didn't look like she shared that sentiment with Stardos. Actually, she looked quite bitter. I don't think, uh, I don't think Dustbine wants to consider losing as an actual option tonight. Dardos, I don't, I don't know what she's going on with when it comes to this. She sounds like she's being sportsmanlike, but at the same point, there's just some kind of sinisterness to her voice. Nevertheless, here come their opponents. The reigning and defending, longest reigning women's tag champs we have here. Their opponents being accompanied by Sonic Aduskan. They are Rajagio Dasum and Kiria Cakes. And together they are the XPWL Women's Tag Team Champion. The Bloody Symphony! And these teams are going to literally tear it up. They've been in non-title matches and each team have had victories over the other. But the titles have not been on the line for that. I can only imagine what this match is going to bring. 
as we go down to ringside. There's no real introductions that need to be done. The announcer already did it. I think we're just giving these teams the opportunity to have a bit of a stare down and trying to get the fans riled up here. All eyes are on the ring right now, and those two ladies, the longest reigning XBWL Women's Tag Team Champions, will their reign continue, or is their streak about to end tonight? Either way, this is gonna be a hell of a match. And we've got Carrot Core out on the one side of the ring and Sonica on the other. And do not tell me either one of them are incapable of being sneaky. That would be silly to make that assumption. And it looks like it's gonna be Radaggio and Stardo starting this out. And wow, look at that. Good sense that the team is working together like a well-oiled machine. And the ref rings the bell and here we go. Rodaggio immediately goes in and a forearm shot by Stardo stops her dead. Hard clothesline. Rodaggio doesn't know what hit her. Irish whip. Finally getting back into it. Nice knee lift. Stardo, oh, a knee lift of her own. Caught Rodaggio right in the temple. And these two teams are going at it. Lifts her up, front suplex. And oh, Stardos with a hard uppercut. An Irish whip and a clothesline, and Radaggio is finding herself in danger here. Nice jawbreaker. Picks up Stardos, and oh, sit out Death Valley driver. And Rajajio wisely tagging out to her sister, Piria. Goes for a stomp, missed the first one, didn't miss the second one though. And grabbing Stardos by the head, trying to pull that mechanical head off. And Stardos backs off and runs right into a clothesline. Piria is not letting uh, Stardos get any advantage whatsoever. Not even letting her get close to her corner. Oh, Stardos with a nice counter. Irish whip into the corner, and Peria hits. Cardos tags in lightning, Dustbine, and Dustbine off the second rope of the double axe handle onto Peria's arm. And hard Irish whip, and Peria sent right out to the floor. The referee beginning his count here. Two one counts because of Dustbine in, exiting the ring. Tried to go for a power bomb and oh, Peria dropped her with an alley oop. And these two are fighting up the aisle way. We might get a count out here. That would be awful. Oh, dropped in the sand. And Peria, oh, oh my God. That's by missing the sand and hitting the back of her head right off that concrete in the parking lot. Peria throwing Dustbine back toward the ring, but she collapsed before she got to the apron. Throws Peria in, slides in after her, and whoa, what a chop. And Peria returning the favor and hitting her with a clothesline. Dustbine is running into problems here. Ever since he took that suplex, and yes, wisely tags out. Cardos back in the ring here right into the corner, and uh-oh, the symphony taking liberties with Stardos being trapped in the corner. Popping a foot hole in her. And again, and again, and again, and again. Off the road, oh, wow, what a drop kick. Those heels digging right into that robotic body of hers. Oh, oh went for a pinfall. And I think Karakor is up on the apron causing a distraction. And there's a chop. And Peria and Dustbine were getting into a chopping fight. Radaggio with a dragon sleeper. Karakor getting involved early on in this match. Radaggio up. Reverse power slam. One 
for a cover here. We got a victory, one, two, no, only a two count. Rajaggio belly to belly suplex. And that she has affectionately started naming the Dazzleplex. And whoa, look at that. Barrage of physical strikes. And Perry has been taken out of the equation. Whoa, tried to go for a Death Valley driver. Snardos got out of it. Nice back body drop. Cardo's grabbing Radaji. Oh, power slam! One, two, and Radaji kicked out at two. But you could tell that took her completely by surprise, and now she's caught in a headlock. Radaji getting back to her feet and breaking it. Off the ropes here, Sardos with a knee lift. Catching Radaggio right in the bust. And Radaggio dancing back with a nice arm drag. Knee lift. Sardos got rocked there. And another one of these power slams. Oh! Sardos got her leg, or I think her leg, or one of her arms caught in the second rope on the way down. And uh oh. Cardo's throwing Radaggio out to the floor here. And Sardos right through the right through their own corner. Area taking big time exception to that. She's out here on the floor. And she is hammering Sardos. Sardos keeps getting out of her grip though. Oh! Radaggio with a hard, solid kick to the gut. Suplex attempt, no, front suplex again. And we're up to six. Girls, you gotta get in the ring. Seven, and Radaggio thrown back in. Nardos making her way back to her corner and tags in Dustbine. Nardos has done us so much in this match already. Came close to ending it too. And now Rada oh my goodness, Radaggio locking Dustbine into place. Are we gonna get a flying siren? I can only imagine what would happen if this ever went wrong. Off the rope, sit down. Dustbine caught right in the head with those high heels. And Radaggio pulling Dustbine into position. One, two, and Dustbine kicked out. Radaggio unsure what to do. She's going to tag Imperia. Imperia with a nice spinning wheel kick there. And oh, Dustbine with a beautiful drop kick. Double leg pickup. And Dustbine with an Irish whip. And, oh, trying to take Perry off the apron. It did not work. And, oh, Dustbine, kick to the gut, takes Perry over the top rope. We got a count started, and it'll be restarted now that they're both on the floor. Area thrown back into the ring. Here comes Dustbine. Oh, wow. What a hit. Area shoved back into her own corner. Didn't bother making the tag. And now Dustbine and Stardos are going to take liberties with Area like they did to her, her they did to Stardos earlier. It might be over here, ladies and gents. We might have new champions here. Nardo's going for the cover for the championship. The referee, one, two, and oh! Peria 
kicked out. That was luck because Radaggio missed it. Oh, power slam. And again, Sardos hitting her finisher. Oh. And they're not making the count because Sonic is now up on the apron. The ref regaining order. Uh-oh. Nardos going for a finisher, implant buster. Oh. Just drilled Peria. Peria's, I think she's out. We might be looking at new tag champs here. One, two, no, Peria kicked out again. Arm drag takeover. Peria tried to go for a chop, no luck there, super kick. Peria doing everything she can to fight. Throw Stardos out of the ring, and I don't know where Rajaggio is. There she is out there on the floor trying to get back up. Oh, Tornado DDT in the corner. Oh, and another forearm shot. Stardos catching. Area right in the head, Rajaggio finally back up. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, suplex, front suplex. Area drop gut first. And Stardos dropping Perry on the stairs. He can't win the titles by count out. I hope she realizes that. Gets back in the ring. And again, Peria escaping Stardos' grasp. There's a chop, and I think she caught Dustbine too. Oh no, power slam again! Peria has been hit with that at least three times now in this match. Stardos ready to fly up on the top, and a knee drop. Going for the cover here. One, two, and Peria kicked out again. Cardos has been in the ring the longest, but I think Peria's had the most abuse. Another implant buster. Oh. And Peria dropped again. Rodaggio coming back in the ring, this time saving her partner. Stardos is taking exception to that. Rodaggio trying to get out of the ring. And Peria, he's trying to get a breather going here. Stardos has really done a lot of damage here. Oh, wow. Peria just went face first into, the, into her own turnbuckle. And Sardos taking advantage of the now dazed, dazzling. Oh! Kick to the back, and Peria just got right back up and just ate a forearm shot. Up and over, suplex didn't work. Peria throwing. Sardos into the corner, we got a double team here. And it's a double springboard, chest first into the corner. And another double team move here. Double backstabber. And now Stardos trying to take advantage. Peria got back in, and Stardos has realized that they just tagged her back in. And Stardos is going to try to keep Peria in the ring. Grabbing her by the hair, trying to take her over to her corner. And a snap there. And again, no effect with the kick. Thrown into the corner here. And oh, Peria got out of it. Irish whip. Peria, I don't think she's going to try to run through again. Hard kick, but it didn't work. Got an elbow first before her trouble. And again, Peria dragging Stardos back to her corner. 
And we got a tag. And oh! Ernos back first, right into Verdaggio's knees. And Verdaggio being pulled by the hair. And everybody knows her thing with her hair. Don't touch it. And uh oh. Reverse power slam again, and oh, Stardos' legs caught up in the ropes. Another toss into the corner. And no luck there, Rodaggio throws her right back in. And oh, again, Stardos able to get out of it. Oh, miss. And miss the boot, though. Arm drag and whoa, Rodaggio being a little bit quicker on the draw there. And now we've got ourselves a staring contest. I don't know, did Sardo shut down or something in the middle of the ring? Are we going to have to stop this? Here he is sitting there talking trash, and Sonica is doing it too. I don't think Stardos is even awake. Oh, she's out of the corner. And again, Rodaggio drops her for the reverse slam in the corner. Oh, another kick to the face by Stardos. And Stardos taking Rodaggio's knee out from under. Oh, Fireman's carry. Oh, kick. A chop, a knee lift, another kick, and a sweep. Rodaggio breaking out some melee combos. One, two, and only a two. Cardo's got rocked there. And Dazzleplex. Right into the center of the ring. One, two, three. Three, it was a three. The symphony still retained. Amazing match. Here are your winners and still the XPWL Women's Tag Team Champions, the Bloody Symphony. These girls earned that victory. Wow, what a match. That brings us to our next one, a grudge match. The one who broke up the flock, taking on basically the flock's backbone behind Abigail. Go. This match has been ominous. We've been waiting for it. And ever since Wednesday Night Whirlwind, we've been wondering, has Twyla Meta tapped into some kind of new power or something that her hair acts the way it does? She looks reminiscent of somebody else. I can't put my finger on it. Nevertheless, this match is going to be hell, and I mean it. It is going to be hell incarnate because this woman has no remorse or feelings for anything. The following contest is a grudge match and is walls count anywhere. Currently on her way down to the ring. From the other side of darkness, the living nightmare. She is a freak consisting of pain, agony, and torture. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Twyla Manta! Twyla Manta has single-handedly destroyed the flock from within. Welcomed in with open arms by Abigail, and through her manipulation, she turned Abigail against her friends and her family, ousting her own sister, along with the rest of her broodmates. And now, Twyla Mena has taken her plans a step further. She attacked and re and she attacked Abigail, restored her mortality just so she could inflict pain on her. That's sick. That's absolutely sick. Only imagine what Flint is going to go through in this match, and I really hope she pulls through all right. Here 
we go. Philomet is pacing back and forth in the ring like a caged animal. And whoa, new entrance. Whoa, new entrance, and by the looks of it, a new attire. From Dark Side. She is one of the founding members of the block. And she is currently the block's savior. Ladies and gentlemen, this is. talked to Flint earlier, she said win, lose, or draw, as long as she goes out there and proves her point, that she doesn't, uh, then it doesn't matter how bad Twyla Meta is, somebody will eventually find a way to stop her, and this match is already getting brutal with the strike attacks. Twyla Meta is trying to take advantage, Flint with a nice uppercut, and a fist, and oh my god, Twyla Meta over the top rope using her momentum to drive her over right into the sand below. Twilometta trying to boot Flint in the face. Flint is really bringing it to Twilometta here. Twilometta has not pulled much offense here. The odd counter here and there, but she hasn't been able to pull a solid offense yet. And Flint is going at her. Here. Oh, what a knee lift by Flint. And Flint going for a cover early. One. And Twilomena sits up angrily at one. You can hear them shrieking from here. And oh my God, she tried to put her claws in her eyes. I thought we were supposed to take that off of her, but apparently she's not listening to rules anymore now that she's been set free, or rather liberated herself from the flock. But a choke slam head into the sand might knock her out. One, two, and only a two. Flint a little surprised at that. The way Twilomena's head hit, you figure she would have been out. Picks her up, Twilomena open over the back. It shoves Flint up against the guardrail. Grabs her by the throat with that clawed hand. And, oh, Flint immediately countering her. What a boot to the face. And Twyla Mena bouncing off the post now. Lynn keeping a close eye on Twyla Mena, watching her get up. She knew she wasn't finished. Grabs a hold of her. What's she going to do with her now? Oh, head first into the apron. Lynn has dominated Twyla Mena. And oh, spine buster! Philometta caught in a spine buster. One, two, three, it's over! Flint wins! Flint defeated Twilometta, and not only that, she practically dominated her. Flint almost tore her apart. I mean, aside from a few offensive moves, it was all Flint. Watch this. That choke slam left Twilometta completely punch drunk after that. Like she tried some offense, but she was so out of it, and Flint kept hammering on her head. Twilometta is completely out. Like she is knocked out completely. Here is your winner, Flynn! And look at that 
liberated smile on her face. No doubt Flynn's going to go backstage and celebrate with her newfound friends, lovers, allies. Call them whatever you want. As far as Flynn's concerned, they are everything to her now. And like I said, she leaves Twyla Mena battered outside the ring here and she moves on to greener pastures. Our next match is about to begin. It's the Super Heavyweight Championship on the line. We'll be going down to ringside very shortly. Has arrived. A 
again, Marty, one of our heaviest hitters. And while he doesn't win every match, you can tell you've been in the ring with him because your jaw will be two inches to the left after you get out of the ring with him. Marty, he's odds on favorite so far from what I've seen coming out here. I mean, sure, Wrath is big and intimidating, but he hasn't won a title yet. Barney, actually, out of most of the people here, I believe is odds on favorite just because, well, his track record, multiple championships, and not to mention his wins by knockout. Bigger, oh, one of the bigger guys. All will suffer. They're actually not brawling right now. Then again, here's another guy who could be odds on favorite. A former international and super heavyweight champion. Their opponent from another time. He is known as the prototype Terminator. He is Rob Rob is making 
making his way down here, obviously with a purpose. He wants that title just as bad as the others do. And I can only imagine that this match is going to get brutal fast, especially considering what's on the line, who is in this match. I mean, up, apart from the hardcore wrestlers, we've got a guy who could knock somebody out with one punch. And no, he's not one punch man for anybody that's willing to come up with that pun. But no, it's not. But we've got a bunch of freaks that like to hit each other with weapons and try to knock each other out with power moves. We've got a prototype Terminator in there who just does damage. And I mean damage. This match is going to be so worth it. Strongman is gonna have his work cut out for him in this match. That's for damn sure. And here comes Corona's brother. Corona's brother coming out to the tune of the Bumba by King Africa. And their opponent from Jamaica. He is known as Jojo Buzz. He stands six foot ten and weighs in at 420 pounds. This is Joe Macko And Joe looking pretty good tonight. Probably got pretty big before the show, but still, you never know. He's catering to the crowd. Who, wa who wants a personal role? I guess he's doing that for somebody while the last participant's making their entrance. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Go waiting for the last guy. And it is our super heavyweight champion, of course. And here he comes. The very proud super heavyweight champion, I might add. And their opponent from Moscow, Russia. He is the current reigning and defending XPWL super heavyweight champion, the Russian giant, Vincent Strongman. Coming out here, very proud of his accomplishment. But again, you gotta figure he is not liking these odds. The odds are strictly stacked against him in this match. Nevertheless, he's a fighting champion and let's see what he can do. For heavyweight title up for grabs. And there goes the bell, and this clusterfuck has begun. And oh wow, power move, Edwards superplexing. Kamako, and now he's going out after, after brother Corona, who's got him up in a fireman's carry. Everybody's going all over the place here. Doomsday got tossed over the top rope, and Barney is currently dealing with Rob. Long man over the top. And Wrath and Doomsday are really taking it to each other here. Body slam. Who's going to win this contest? Wow. Remember, this is a Ring of Carnage match as well. So a 
eliminations are on, and wow, Edwards just strangling Corona out here on the floor. Is that Jamaco? I can't really tell from here. I think that's Corona. Yeah, it is Corona. Jamaco taken out, out onto the floor, and Barney tried to take down Vincent, and Rob clotheslined him, and he tried to rush him, and Barney turned it into a hip toss. Oh, Strongman gets slapped right across the chest. Now Barney measuring the champion in the middle of the ring. Everybody else is out on the outside. And Barney measuring Strongman. He left and a spinning lariat. Almost took Vincent's head clean off. Picks him up. And chucks him into the corner right into Jamaco. Neither one budgets.
Jose going for a pin. One, two, and Joe kicks out. Oh, Corona gets clobbered from behind by Roboman, and Roboman picking him off. Package, pile driver, and a beast bomb onto his brother on the other side of the ring by Doomsday.
take it. Yeah, Corona's still out there and he's still fighting. What a hit. Picks him up and yeah. Three men. 
Finn is going to be the champion at the end of this match. Sidebar slam by Rob. And Edward is still out of the picture right now. Rob trying to make work work of Corona, and Corona is now stuck in the tree of woe. And Rob is going to do the XBWL trademark. Somebody's got to fly. It may as well be him. Air Terminator from point, from coast to coast. And oh, Corona is bleeding bad. Rob's got him, it's over. No, he's picking, picking him up. And Corona, he's dodging, but he's barely on his feet at the moment. Hard knee lift on the Rob, and a back elbow. Edwards finally back up. It's back in the ring himself. Corona now measuring Rob, and oh God. Oh, reverse choke slam, and Corona taken out of the picture completely. Hard lariat attempt there, no luck, but the uppercut didn't miss. Inverted, oh, inverted, full Nelson slam. Legs, Edward getting out of it. And he's measuring Rob now. Oh, grabs him by the face. That's that, and that's that claw holder, whatever it is, on his mouth. And Rob is having a hard time getting out of it. Rob, Rob's out. Rob passed out. Corona now attacking him from behind. And now Edward's got it on. Oh, Edward's got it on Corona. It might be over. Corona desperately trying to fight out of it. Kicking and screaming like a maniac. He's actually getting his hand up. He actually, oh, he broke the hold. Edward didn't even see it coming. Oh, Northern Lights. One, two. Corona pulling out a desperation attempt there with a Northern Lights suplex. There, something neck breaker. Corona picking up Edward again. Gonna want to make short work of him. DDT. A nice hard one too, but he's not going for the cover. What is he doing? Neck snap. Corona measuring him again. Edward has not been able to mount much offense. Slapped on that claw hold. Death Valley driver sit out. And Corona gets on top of him. Holding the leg. One, two, three. And our new XBWL Super Heavyweight Champion is the returning Corona Wave Rider. Check out some of these scenes here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, there's a good shot of the up, over, and down before it happened. And oh, an iron claw slam that saw Doomsday hit the canvas hard on his head. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner and the new XBWL Super Heavyweight Champion, Corona Wave Rider. Corona couldn't be happier coming back after four years and grabbing a hold of championship gold. Congratulations, Corona, and welcome back to XBWL. That's a hell of an accomplishment as we go down to the ring now for what has been a highly anticipated matchup as Magic Mare defends the XBWL Women's Championship against Cynical Flitter. Ladies and gentlemen, this next match is scheduled for one fall and it's for the XPWL Women's Championship. Here she comes. Pinnacle Flitter, multiple time XPWL Women's Champion also. Her 
and Magic Bear are the only two women in XPWL right now that have the longest women's championship title reign between the two of them. Clinical Glitter holds the most wins, and up until recently, when Glitter broke it, Magic Bear held the record for the longest reign as women's champion. to get the Women's Championship back after actually agreeing to a fair match with Magic Bear. The two of them actually ended up having a great match together with Magic Bear actually coming out on top. And this is Glitter's rematch. And I'm sure Flitter just wants to get the damn belt. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's a hell of a performer. And of course, you can always buy her merchandise. Her little matriarch t-shirts are in the t-shirt kiosks. Here we go. The great and magnificent one is about to arrive. Over 
the women's championship. And Flitter saying, I don't need to know what it looks like. It's mine. I'm taking it home. That remains to be seen as we get ready for this next championship match. And Flitter looks ready and focused. And this time, Magic Mare not looking overconfident as, oh, Flitter immediately charges across and spears Magic Mare. Again, putting the emphasis on Magic Mare having a bit of trouble because you know Flitter's going to be gunning for this belt and she'll do anything to get it. Hitting a second spear that early. And she is really going after Magic Mare here. Magic Mare can't get out of the gate here. Dawnbreaker, finally something defensive. Over the top, DDT. Magic Mare with a couple of well-placed boots to the face. And oh, Flitter raking the eyes. Magic Mare with a nice neck breaker. And a chop and a, oh, a fist and a kick. Magic Mare throwing some melee combos down here. And oh, oh, dragon suplex by Flitter. And Magic Mirror landed right on the back of her head. And whoa, Flitter trying to get this match done early. Hangman's DDT coming up. Magic Mirror didn't even see it coming. Magic Mirror has been basically dropped. One, two, and Magic Mirror kicks out. Flitter had to think, trying to go for her signature or finisher that early wouldn't work. Magic Mare trying to get some aggression going. Hammerlock. Oh, Flitter breaking the hold by striking her right in the chest. And oh, kicked her down. And wow, Flitter early step DDT. Again, Flitter pulling out all the stops here. One, two. And Magic Mirror again kicks out at two. And Flitter getting a little irritated here. Trying to get the crowd going. Magic Mirror actually kicking out of the Hangman's DDT and the Spike, or the, yeah, the Spike DDT. And oh, Magic Mirror with some kind of a brain buster. Flitter got right back up, went for a knee lift, and Magic Mirror caught her coming in. Flitter taking Magic Mare up to the ropes and strangling her. And oh, tried to grab a hold of Magic Mare. Magic Mare broke it. Caught Flitter with a punch. Elbow to the leg. And a boot to the gut. And it, oh, again, Magic Mare caught off guard here and hit with another snap DDT. Another pin one. And again, Magic Mare kicked out. Magic Mare has been nailed out of nowhere with that snap DDT twice. And both times, Magic Mare didn't see it coming. If this keeps up, the title is going to be changing hands easily. Litter now, or Magic Mare, what is she doing? Oh, wow. Oh, that's an innovative way to use the ropes. Magic Mare now feeding shots to Flitter, who's laying down. Oh, kick to the gut. And oh, ramming her face, ramming her fist right into Flitter's face. Magic Mare not sure, putting Flitter in a rear naked chin lock here and holding on tight. A chin lock, actually. And Flitter grabbing a hold of Magic Mare's head and hitting her with a jawbreaker to break it up. Oh, what a fist. And oh, Magic Mare finally trying to go for her own finisher here. The twisting cutter. He catches it. Can she get the pin though? One, two, and no, Flitter kicks out. Now Magic Mare showing signs of frustration. Could have been a bit of taunting though, not exactly the best idea when your opponent is Splitter. And Magic Mare going up top, this could have been a mistake. Off the top, trying to drop kick and Splitter got out of the way. Oh, Magic Mare with a 
jawbreaker. Ooh. Forearm shot. And a ball, a Pele kick out of nowhere. And Magic Mare trying to pull Flitter. Having a hold of her and uh-oh. Grabs a hold of Flitter and into the razzle dazzle. And she's trying to get Flitter to give up. And Flitter close to the ropes, but she just can't reach them. Magic Mirror's really got the torque on that. Now, oh, ref wouldn't let wouldn't call for the bell. She had to let it go. And Flitter might be in trouble here. Oh, another twisting cutter might have just got inadvertently dodged. As now Flitter has got the half grab on Magic Mirror, and Magic Mirror breaking the hold as quick as she could. Flitter with a jawbreaker. And oh no, another snap DDT coming up. Oh. It's over. There's no way in hell. Flitter's got this. Going down for the count here. One, two. And again, Magic Mirror actually kicked out. Flitter is getting frustrated. And she's showboating now for the crowd. Magic Mirror making it up under her own power. Tried to go for an attack, and oh! I, saw, I thought Flitter countered her, but Magic Mirror took the hit, and then Insecurity kicked Flitter in the head and took her right off the apron. And Flitter slamming Magic Mirror in the corner, and now Magic Mirror turning the tide and doing the opposite. And uh-oh. Here we go, another one. Is this going to end the match, though? Magic Mirror looking to do a coast-to-coast -coast here. I guess because this is the Sobble Beach Slam Fest and we're at the Sobble Beach Amusements, let's just call this one the Pipeline Express! And Flitter down after taking that drop kick. The Pipeline Express, of course, was a roller coaster that they had here at the amusements before they shut it down permanently. We got a pin attempt. One, two, and Flitter kicked out of it. And Magic Mirror is now beside herself. And Flitter with another jawbreaker. And, oh. Oh, butterfly suplex right across the ring. Magic, oh, tried to go for a lariat. Magic Mirror got out of it. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, Flitter tried to go for the hip attack and she tried her, got herself all hooked. Flipped out. And there's that lariat that Flitter borrowed slash stole from Violance. Used it to end matches before. This might be it. One, two, and no. Magic Mirror again kicks out. And you can see the look on Flitter's face. She's absolutely living. Magic Bear, oh no! Magic Bear caught again. Flitter, snap DDT, it's over! It's gotta be over! Flitter going for the pin. Ref goes down. One, two, and Magic Bear kicked out again! This match has been unbelievable! Magic Mare, Fireman's Carry, trying to take Flitter off of her game here, managing to kick out of her finisher, but just barely. And again, oh, Flitter again with the forearm, and again, Magic Mare kicking her in the head. Flitter with a hard shot and a spear out here on the floor. Thrown back into the ring. Here comes Flitter in after her. And Flitter turn around, not too not fast enough. And Magic Mare rolling cutter. And wow, she went right into the cover there. One, two, three. It's over. Magic Mare retains. Magic Mare retains her title. Back to some of the action. Here you see the razzle dazzle put on to Flitter, but she ended up releasing the hold. Couldn't get her to give up. I still 
cannot believe that Magic Mirror hit a coast to coast drop kick and only got a two count on Flitter. There's that Lariat that I told you about. Here is your winner and still XBWL Women's Champion, Magic Really coming through tonight with her title victory. And again, as we tried to explain earlier in the show, White Cybertail became injured not too long ago, and he was forced to vacate his chance at the international championship. Nevertheless, tonight, Texan Gamer has been given the okay to challenge. It's Texan Gamer versus Mr. X tonight for the international championship. Speaking of which, here comes the certified scout main right now. And of course he's bringing his manager Livy out with him. We've been watching Texan for the last couple of weeks. He was really, really hoping like hell that he was gonna get in on this match. He was gunning for it so bad. The locker room was gunning for it for him as well. And here we go, Texas Gamer has a legit chance of becoming the XPWL International Champion. All he has to do is beat the rather large Mr. X. And Texan is ready to go. The money begins to fall from the rafters. The man that tries to buy the cities he goes to and the current international champion, as you can see around his waist. And again, it may be the syndicate's money, but I wouldn't take that money if you knew what was good for you. You don't know who the hell it was for all you know, somebody could have gotten hurt, or worse, and that money may have been a payoff. Nevertheless, Mr. X did not weasel his way to the championship, he legitimately earned it. So we can't really give him too much grief for the factor that he has won a championship here. He actually did it legitimately. No Robo X, no Syndicate members at ringside. He did it himself. Challenger. If you don't know where he's from, I suggest you buy a globe, you uneducated piece of shit. He is the certified scout main, Texan Gamer 13! His opponent, from the big city, he is the leader of the syndicate and the current reigning and defending XPWL International Heavyweight Champion, Mr. X. And again, X winning that title, only to defend it here at Sobble Beach Slam Fest. Texan finally, after all this time and all this waiting, he found out today that he would be the one in this championship match. And he looks ready to go. And I don't know if Mr. X truly knows what he's gotten himself into. Then again, he runs in and hits Texan with a bulldog right away. And he is legit trying to flatten Texan as early as he can. Trying to go for strike attacks. 
Texan in the early going, keeping trying. And Mr. X trying to hammer back. Texan with a hard right hand. Trying to clothesline. X did not go down. X tries to clothesline and he missed. Oh, he didn't miss the second one though. Texan goes down. And Texan taking the legs out from under X. And X taking the legs out from under Texan. And these two are going hold for hold here. Back body drop. Texan didn't care who it was against as long as he got his shot. And here we go, him fighting his heart out for the possibility of finally becoming the XPWL International Champion. And a double arm DDT might have just sealed the deal there. He gets down on top of X for the pin. Well, no, not even a one count. And Texan can't believe it. You see the look on his face? He went wide eyed and his jaw dropped. Nevertheless, Texan again trying his luck. Picks up Mr. X. Oh, ETS. Off the ropes, what's he doing here? Oh, kicks X right in the face. And going straight into the pin. The ref is out of position. One, two. It would have been a two, it would have probably been a very close two count, but nevertheless, the ref was out of position. Texan almost putting everything into that move. And a hard clothesline from X puts Texan down for the count. And a clothesline finally taking X off his feet. And X was trying to go for the corner. Texan wouldn't let him go. Kicked him in the back, a hard punch. I'll give X this, he's not trying to get himself counted out. I'm not sure what he's planning to do here. And oh, raking the back. Texan tried going for a clothesline and missed. But he didn't miss the second one. Bit of an awkward landing, but he still hit it. And Texan going in behind on, oh, X here, and double arm DDT again. Texan not exactly sure what to do. X taking his legs out from under him. And oh, a neck breaker. Texan is measuring Mr. X. And Texan grabbing a hold of him, picks him up again. And look at this string, oh! Another GTS and Texan's gonna do it again! Pick him! Picking X right square in the head. I think he hit him right in the forehead. And again, the ref taking his time. Two, three, it doesn't matter! We have a new champion! A new international champion has been crowned! Check out this double arm DDT. We thought it was over right there. We didn't count on X actually getting up at one. But he went right into the pinfall and you can see not even a one and he kicked out. Now here's the first GTS, watch that. X goes down and there's the kick off for the second time, I believe. Going into the pinfall here and one, two, and no, that was the same one. And there's the roll through DDT. Texan really innovative with that butterfly DDT of his. And there's the shot of the second GTS. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and new XPWL International Champion, Texan Gamer 13! And Texan can't believe his own eyes. Texan has been fighting, clawing, trying to make his way up to the top. He didn't have luck in the tag team division because of something that happened with his partner. He climbed up the ladder in the singles division and finally he can call himself champion. That being said, we're coming up to our main event and it'll be for the XPWL World Championship, a triple threat triangle death match. This is going to be insane, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening, and it is for the XPWL World Heavyweight Championship. Currently on his way to the ring from the uh, equestrian outback, he is known as Stone Cold. never actually lost his world title in the ring, really, if you think about it. Injuries actually took the title away from him. Severe concussions that he suffered while he also inflicted the same amount onto his opponent at the time, Violance. The two missing several weeks of action. Now Blue finally getting a chance to re-earn it and this one, another who was inserted into this match, into the main event tonight, as he is making his way out here. And there it is, the lightning strikes, the flames have risen, and here comes the Shadow Realm's Lord, blessed with the demon of Dark Omen's power. And he looks ready. Let's kill tonight. His opponent from the realm of shadow. He is the Lord of the Shadow Realm. And he is the number one contender to the XBWL World Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, the Inverted Shadow! And Chad is ready. Not as ready as he'll ever be. You gotta figure after those matches with the Symphony and Flint earlier tonight, Chad's gotta be coming in here with a pleasant Mind, a mindset that's calm, collective, and ready to challenge Gabriel for the world crown tonight. Chad, big kiss here on pay per view, here on YouTube. issued the challenge to Shad despite not realizing that True Blue would be getting his rematch. So Gabriel welcomed the chance for them both to try him at the same time. And here we have our triple threat main event. Their opponent. From Chroma City, he is the small man who slams the giant, and he is the current XPWL World Heavyweight Champion, Gabriel the Destroyer! Gabriel looks ready, willing and able to get the job done tonight. He's got two opponents, but like I said, for a guy who has the kind of strength that Gabriel does, perhaps we are underestimating him and he might be able to hold his own in this match. Nevertheless, this is going to be an awesome contest. we go. The title held high. The referee will award it to the winner tonight. Lou and Gabriel pacing back and forth. Shad standing still 
and immediately Blue rushes across the ring and attacks a champion. And he tried to go after Shad on the same thing. And despite Shad's counter, he got caught in another move and hung up in the ropes where Blue took advantage. Gabriel with a hard shot to Blue. And slamming his head into the mat. Now Shad up, and oh, what a forearm by Gabriel. Gabriel told Shad, once they get in the ring, it's the, it's the thrill of the competition. If you can't step up, step aside. But I don't think Shad's gonna have any issue with that. And Shad taking a few seconds and assessing the situation here while Blue dumped right out in front of him here. And Gabriel is going to the top rope and measuring Blue and Blue. Shad tried to stop him off the top. No luck there. Kick. And a suplex and Blue landing on the back of his head. And oh, Shad grabbing Gabriel by the hair and pulling him over in a suplex and putting him in a shoulder claw. Another neck breaker and going after Gabriel while Shad gets out of the ring for a breather. And Blue hangs up Gabriel on the top rope. Blue said he's more than ready to regain the title that he never lost. But unfortunately for Blue, it's not like he's facing the person that originally took it. Blue is facing a guy who went through the trouble of earning it. And now, oh, is taking on all covers. Chad catching Gabriel in the spine buster. And now he's in a giant swing. And look at Blue just holding his hands up saying, never mind, I'm staying out of it. Gabriel is going to get motion sickness sooner or later. And oh, Chad was probably going to go for a cover. Blue cut him off. Now, I don't understand this strategy, letting Gabriel lay down and recover. Oh, Shad taking a knee lift from Blue out onto the apron he goes. And Blue hitting the Stone Cold Stunner, or a variation of it, onto Gabriel, but only getting a two count. And trying to go for a snap suplex, and Gabriel got out of it. Grabs a hold of, oh, grabs a hold of Blue, and Shad interrupted him, and now Gabriel's out on the floor. Chad hangs up Blue on the top rope. There's a stomp to the gut. And oh, hammering Blue with those elbow smashes. Tries to pick him up. No, no luck there. And Blue now measuring. Measuring Chad. Chad went into the corner. And not only did Gabriel see him, he rushed him and slammed his knee right into Shad's face. And Shad with a crossbody taking Gabriel down. Blue going for a cover. One, two, Gabriel kicks out. Gabriel already taking a stunner once. And Blue trying to go for something else. No, Executioner DDT. And Shad showboating up on the top rope. He shouldn't have done that. Gabriel saw that, and he went right after him. Look at this. Shad made the mistake of taking his eyes off the prize, and it's going to cost him. Gabriel twisted him around, up, and Shad is in. Oh, underhook pile driver. Got a pin attempt. One, two, no, Gabriel. Couldn't get the job done. Trying to hammer on Blue, and Blue grabbing a hold of Gabriel. And uh-oh, backpack stunner, and Gabriel has been laid out. Blue trying to go for a power bomb. Shad counters it. Gabriel trying to get back to his feet here. Oh, Blue dropped right on the back of his head from an alley-oop bomb. 
And Gabriel now trying to take a few seconds to get his bearings back. There's a pump handle slam. One, two, no, Blue kicks out. And Blue and Chad have been practically ignoring Gabriel the last few seconds. And oh, Gabriel clothesline in the corner. And now Chad having his way with Gabriel again. Gabriel shouldn't have gotten that, shouldn't have gotten in that close. Hard smash. And oh, boot to the face. out. Blue takes Gabriel off his feet. Gabriel rolls out to the floor and whoa. Blue tried for a springboard attack. That didn't work so well. And now, oh, stunner out of nowhere. And there goes Blue going for the cover. Gabriel watching two. Chad getting eliminated by the Stone Cold Stunner. And oh, Gabriel catching Blue without Blue even realizing what's going on and caught in the underhook pile driver. Is that it? Is this it? Going for the cover, the pin, one, two, three, and Gabriel retains the world championship. That didn't take long. Gabriel picked and chose his battle. As soon as he saw Shad go down from the stunner, he took a back seat and watched Blue pin him. And then while Blue was celebrating, he walked right into the underhook pile driver. What a match. What a main event. This was great. Kudos to all three men who put their bodies on the line out here. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match and still XPWL World Heavyweight Champion, Gabriel the Destroyer. And as he hoists the gold, we end this broadcast with our champion holding the belt high. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight for XPWL Sable Beach Slam Fest. I am your leader, Mark Wondersham. I'm your lead commentator, mind you. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We're always, always, always looking to make some new audience members. We're very appreciative of the ones who join us for our shows. Anyway... As you can tell, this is a pay-per-view, so most of the music that was used in this video is more than likely not in the actual 2K19 soundtrack. I am going to provide in the description as many of the songs as I can and their artists because I do wish to credit them because I did not use them for the sake of trying to make money or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Take in mind, this is kind of like my disclaimer from my last two pay-per-view videos. So if you're listening to this, I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from. Nevertheless, I just figured it would be a good thing to sign off the video with this disclaimer. And, just so that we're clear, I am not affiliated with WWE. I am not affiliated with AEW, Ring of Honor. I am not affiliated with 2K Sports. I am not affiliated with, a play with Sony or Steam other than my PlayStation Network and my Steam accounts. And thank you very much for enjoying the show.